Here's the best types of lists, and I'm going to talk to you about each type of seller and what you encounter when you market. When you're marketing people in pre-foreclosure, obviously they have no options. Uh, it's a very easy lead to get under contract. When you're meeting with a seller who is behind on payments, they don't have any options. And so you negotiating with the bank on their behalf to buy the property is a great option for them. It's a very motivated list that you're going to be marketing to. The second list is free and clear. Uh, we, I tend to tell, I, I tell people that when they're starting out, you want to go after, if I had to advise you, I'd say these top three lists are the best when you're starting. You're going to deal with very motivated sellers, and a lot of opportunities that come your way right now are going to be over leveraged. That pre-foreclosure list is a very motivated seller list. But these two lists have a lot more equity, and the deals are actually quicker. So if you find, for example, when you market to a free and clear property list, this is a list of properties that are owned free and clear, and 25% of the country owns a free and clear property, meaning there's no mortgage attached to this property. So what we do is we market to this property and we target for landlords. So people that own rental properties that have no mortgage. The reason I tell a lot of beginning investors it's a good list to go after is because the transactions can happen very quickly. You don't have to negotiate with the bank. All you have to do is go out there and meet with the seller, make an offer on the property, put the property under contract, and then turn around and sell that property to another investor for more. If somebody has a tremendous amount of equity, you can get creative with your offers. You can uh, create owner-financed offers if you want. Uh, if there is a small mortgage, obviously you can buy the property subject to, but with a free and clear property, you're obviously dealing with a person with no mortgage. So the only way to buy that property is obviously either to finance it through a private lender, uh, owner financing or get some sort of financial institution like a bank to finance you. But the reason it's a good property to start out with is the deal is easy to work through the pipeline, meaning you don't have to spend three, four months negotiating with a person who has a free and clear property. Uh, downside is it takes a lot of leads to get one good deal. If you get 20 people to, you know, if it, on average it's going to take 20 to 25 leads from people with free and clear properties and the majority of them are not going to want to sell at a discount. And so it can be kind of frustrating when you're working the leads and you're getting, you know, like, oh man, this isn't a good lead source. You're not motivated. Uh, but if you market enough, you'll find one out of 20, one out of 25 will convert into a good deal. Uh, probate list. This is the most difficult list to get. Uh, what you do is you get a list from the probate court. Has anybody ever gone down to their local municipality and tried to put this list together? Um, it can be difficult depending on where you live. This is a good list to market to though because obviously someone's passed away. A lot of times the heirs live out of state, they live outside of the area, they either live outside of the county or even out of the state, and they've just inherited a property. Oftentimes, if I had to profile a typical person who is inheriting a property, generally it's one of the children. Uh, one of the grandchildren is inheriting. A lot of times they're a little younger than obviously the person who passed away. They're all of a sudden thrown a property that oftentimes has a lot of equity and they want nothing to do with it more often than not. And so you obviously have to make them feel comfortable as to why they should do business with you as opposed to maybe another alternative option which would be to list it with a realtor and sell it. So a lot of times what you'll be competing against is them calling a realtor and them selling it through a more traditional means. But often, when you reach them very early on in the process, they haven't even thought about how they're gonna get rid of this property. You know, they're dealing with other issues, and then all of a sudden you market to them, and a lot of times, they haven't even thought about it, and all of a sudden they get a letter from you, and there, now that's a good, strong, warm lead. Obviously, the downside to, to probate is, is the number of errors that often you have to deal with at any ongoing time. Um, let me go through the, the rest. A bankruptcy list, uh, write this down, PACER, uh, P-A-C-E-R. PACER is an online website that you, I think it's pacer.org or .gov, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's pacer.org. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, I can't remember the last three digits. But on PACER, you can actually get bankruptcy information. Now, what happens is a homeowner who wants to stop a foreclosure, what do they often do? file bankruptcy. What happens is most people don't stay in bankruptcy very long who try to stop a foreclosure with a bankruptcy. They might stay in bankruptcy for three, four months 
and then the, the property will fall out of bankruptcy, the bankruptcy will be dismissed. Uh, bankruptcy doesn't work for most people. Uh, oh, bankruptcy only generally works when the homeowner has a temporary loss of a job, and then they regain employment, so now they just need a, a, a time to basically uh, rework some of the debts that they have. Most people use a bankruptcy to stop a foreclosure, and it doesn't end up working. The property ends up being dismissed and pulled out of bankruptcy generally three, five months down the road. Well, a lot of pre-foreclosure investors don't market to people once they go into bankruptcy or they stop marketing. They just work on the new pre-foreclosures. Well, these are a great opportunity to work leads that went into bankruptcy and now they're being dismissed and the foreclosure is going to pick back up right where it left off and it's a great opportunity to pick up a property. So if you're going to be marketing to people in bankruptcy, you want to go after recent dismissals. That's just a, a note. Um, 30, 60, 90 day list, we talked about that. You can get that from the credit agencies. The out of state owner list comes from the grand list. And the fire damage property, this is a little unique list that is not the easiest list in the world to put together. But what happens is every time there's a fire, the, the uh, municipality, whatever, fire, whatever city that, that fire is in, the fire department keeps a record of every single house fire, whether it's just a little room fire or the whole house burned down. And these are great properties to go after. We've bought a lot of fire damage properties. In fact, it's a, I, I'd call it, I, mean, I don't know if I'd say it's a specialty of ours, but it's a, it's a niche that we've made a lot of money because what happens is when somebody has a fire on their property, the property, all they want to do, all they're worried about is collecting their what? Insurance check. And so it's a great opportunity for an investor to come in uh, work with a homeowner. Oftentimes they don't want to rebuild. They don't want nothing to do with this property. They want to collect their insurance check, make sure the mortgage is taken care of. It's a great opportunity to buy a property at a discount.